Okay, so this is one for the photography buffs out there. This is the Sigma lens that I got myself a little while ago. Well, actually, it was a birthday present. I didn't get it for myself because it's far too expensive. The actual price... Oh my god, the autofocus! The camera lens has decided to go on strike because it knows it's looking at another lens. It's jealous because this is the lens I use for the most part when I'm doing my regular photography stuff itself. And I won't say photography work because I'm not a professional, but come on, autofocus. Be professional with me. Come on, get back to it. Don't make me have to put you on manual settings. There we go. Right, so this is the Sigma lens. I'm going to put the price up on the bottom of the screen because at this point I've forgotten what it costs. It is more pricey to get it from Amazon, so you might want to go for, uh, through the websites and so on and so forth. PC World is more expensive than Amazon and so on and so forth. But I do like this lens quite a bit. This gives you coverage from 18mm to 300mm, so it is both a macro lens and a port rate lens and a long distance lens. Obviously the quality can vary depending on what's going on, but I quite like it. It's got its own stabilizer, it's got autofocus, it's got a lock mechanism as well. This is just your sheath to, well your lens uh, cover to protect from excess sun. Yeah, you get quite a nice bit of everything here don't you? You've got all kinds of stuff that I generally, to be quite frank, ignore because it's just not something I actually look at when I'm actually eyeing things up with a camera. You always get a lot of professional uh, photographers on YouTube who have some very good videos on how to improve your photography and they start talking about the mathematics and everything. And really, for the most part, when I'm looking at any kind of lens, when I'm looking through any kind of lens, I'm not really looking at these bits here. I've got no idea what they're about, other than obviously that talks about feet and so on and so forth. But it's not important to me because I just eyeball everything. If it looks good to me, then I'll take a photo of it. And just to give you some idea of what's going on, the lock is actually in place right now, so I'll unlock it. That means you get the full extension. That's quite a nice long lens there. It's not the longest lens you can get. If you wanted to take really long distance telephoto shots, you'd need a really proper long lens, but that looks quite decent in its own right. There's a good bit of weight to it, okay, and you will need to rest it on your hand when you're busy taking photos with it or make sure that you've got a good tripod or monopod available to you um, and again you've got a whole load of distances and so on it also points out that it's a macro lens the thing I've found with this is that it works absolutely perfectly as a macro lens so long as you actually extend it fully okay when you extend it fully then it does get a very good image there if you try to just do a close-up by moving everything here at the 18 mil uh, range it does doesn't work properly unless that's obviously what you're looking for but if you're wanting to get a really good up close shot at a macro level yeah you've got to zoom in that's the only way it really works there the only thing i'll say about the lock mechanism is that unfortunately it only works in this one position okay it's fully locked now try moving it anywhere else and you just get no movement from that whatsoever you know that will not move at all it will not allow you to lock it in place which means unfortunately you can get lens creep sometimes you know if you leave it in the position you want then it will just from the sheer weight move of its own accord lens creep is of course a lens creep uh, lens cover here the lens protector oh, this is what happens when you try to put something on while looking through the camera uh, viewfinder that just doesn't work when you do it that way, but when you do it freehand and actually looking at it, it works perfectly. That The whole reason behind this design is that it's trying to compensate for the fact that this is a long lens as well as a short lens, 18 to 300 millimeters. There's going to be some uh, compromise there. If you were to be using a, a dedicated lens that is meant to be, say, 300 mils all the time or anything from about 70 onwards, um, as I found with some other, other long lenses that I've used, then you would have more of a sort of tunnel effect, but those tunnel effects don't actually uh, create any distortion or anything like that at any kind of length. This, however, has a very specialised lens because if you did have a, a, one of the covers that looks more like a cup in some regards, uh, anytime you're below 70 uh, millimetres, then you sort of get the tunneling and vignette effect, but which becomes more and more obvious, uh, which can obviously have some creative purposes, but it's not necessarily something you always want to be seeing. And it also comes with its own protective cover as well, uh, which you can fit in here with a bit of difficulty. Um, doesn't always work when you've got the hood on. 
but it works most of the time. Certainly when the hood's off, certainly when the, the, the uh, lens cap cover is off, it fits on quite easily. But you just keep getting the feeling that it's just not going to stay on properly. See, that came off very easily with very minimal effort on my part there. It's just a couple of things that could be made a little better as far as the protective lens cover is concerned. But in general terms, yeah, I love this lens. It's metal instead of plastic, and a lot of professionals moan continuously about plastic covers rather than metal covers. Metal is apparently harder wearing and whatnot, so, you know, that fits in perfectly. And of course, you can also use protective rear covers from any other lens that you may have, and they all fit quite nicely. This particular lens is set up specifically for the Canon, so it's not compatible with the likes of Nikon or anybody else, uh, Olympus and Philip and Sony. Do Philip even have cameras? Or have I just made that off the top of my head? Couldn't really say at this point. But yeah, I do like this. I don't use it for the YouTube videos for the simple fact that the lens itself is so much bigger than the standard kit lens that comes with the DSLR. So it might be very rare cases where I might use this lens for future videos, but for also I'm just going to stick with the standard kit lens in that case, because it's just easier to work around. Uh, this, on the other hand, this is the lens I use about 99% of the time now. I've gone to photography classes with this, I've gone on photography walks with this, I've gone off, off on trips to museums and so on and so forth using this. And it's, for me, it's the only real lens that I need. If I wanted to get involved in more long distance shots, then I'd have to uh, save up quite a substantial amount of money for a long lens, which gives more distance than 300 millimeters. But right now, at this point in time, I don't really find myself interested in that kind of photography. But it's great for portraiture. It's good for long distance shots, landscape shots, uh, spotting things uh, in architectural kind of situations where you might see, say, I don't know, gargoyle on a cathedral, for example, that sort of thing. Um, it works very, very nicely. To start a case of one lens to rule them all, as some people have made comments about the lenses that are anything from 18 to 400 millimeters. I can't remember the name of that one, but uh, right now I did consider getting it, which I should remember the name of it, but that was going for something like 400 quid at the time, 450 maybe, and nobody had the money for that. Uh, not even as a birthday present. But um, I've got to say, I like this. I really, really do like this. I, I can hardly recommend it. It does take a bit of getting used to. The only thing that perhaps I don't like is the uh, sheer size of the focus ring. I prefer manual focus when I take photos. I just find that I get more control over it. The autofocus can be a bit difficult to work with on any number of lenses, including this one uh, that I'm using right now. As this entire video will be a testament to. The uh, stabilisation here does work absolutely nicely, but it's just the ring itself, it could have been wider. See all this plastic here, and see the actual ring here, this, see this tiny amount of grip space that you've got. That could have been so much wider, it could have gone over the whole of this ring, and I could have even had a smaller uh, surface of uh, smooth plastic here and a larger ring for the focus and that would have worked so much better but no unfortunately that's the one drawback that i really have there the autofocus not being that good and the manual focus ring not being as wide as i'd perhaps like it to be one good thing though is if you do have this in autofocus mode and you try using uh, the manual focus ring, it tends to lock that off in place so that you can't actually end up using this and therefore bugging up your lens. Other lenses I've had where the autofocus is still on by accident and you know you try using the manual focus ring, you end up being able to do it but it ends up creating a bit of a fight that you're not really entirely aware of. This seems to actually lock it off in place so that you can't actually do anything with it. See, just like that. That's all locked up in place quite nicely. I also like the fact that it actually puts colours on those so much. I always have the uh, the OS, the, the stabilisation function on because why wouldn't you? Um, but yeah, I just love this lens. It is so good. So, marks out of 10. I'd have to give it at least a solid 9 out of 10 because 10 stands for perfection. Perfection is impossible, but this is pretty damn close. Toodles!